coverage of the NFL leads us to a snow-covered Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, PA. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. With the Indianapolis Colts. Throwing. Brissett. And his first look is incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Brissett sets to throw it. He's got Jack Doyle. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness. This is caught inside the 15. And he we takes it this. down deep into Pittsburgh territory. A big play there for Andy. 49 yards. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge gain last play. I know there will be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. To try again after the sack. Brissett, he completes this one to Mack. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll make it third down. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of the defense. <laughs> On third down, Brissett. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. The Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. But they took the shot, didn't get it, and there's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three, psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. Vinatieri's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. Vinatieri, the NFL's oldest active player, also the league's all-time leading scorer, passed Morton Anderson last year. Yeah, he turned 46 in December of 2018. He really can't see it in his leg. Maybe in the beard. You can see it in the beard. Maybe in the beard. That's about it. But as long as he's booting them the way he's booting them, keep going, big guy. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it second and 12. 
Come on, set. Stick the oar. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third at about seven left. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Here we go. Six the outlaw. Tight end right. Tight end right. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. Get it. Go. Throwing on third down. Here's Rudolph. And that will be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Chester Rogers, deep for Indianapolis. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Colts offense coming back out. It's a team that, as we said, in week eight beat Denver 15 to 13. And it was an interesting game for Adam Vinatieri. He missed a field goal on the Colts opening drive, missed the extra point on the lone touchdown. But then he did what Adam Vinatieri does, Charles, when it mattered. With 30 seconds left, he hit the game-winning field goal. And he has kept the confidence of his head coach despite his struggles earlier this season and his struggles in this game against Denver. A lot of coaches say, okay, hold on a second. This isn't really working. They would have called offense differently. Instead, Frank Reich settled for the field goal. He called runs on second and third down inside the Broncos 35. He said, I felt like we were inside Vinny's range. Worked, very, worked out very well for Frank Reich. Didn't work out for Matt Nagy in Chicago when he knelt, and then Eddie Pinero missed the field goal. Yeah, but Vinatieri hit the 51-yarder. Because he's Adam Vinatieri. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's why they call him the GOAT, right? Colts won, have won three in a row now to get to 5-2, and two, and they'll be at the Steelers in Week 9. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Play action now, Brissett. He's going to look deep down the field. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. There's Brissett. And that's incomplete. So they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Back deep for the Steelers, Ryan Switzer. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 13. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going... Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Out of the gun, Rudolph. 
A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. Here's the second year back out of NC State, Naheem Hines. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. On second and seven. Brissett looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. From the gun, here's Brissett. And he's got his man, Hilton. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Here we go. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? That ball is caught. It's Doyle. Touchdown, Colts. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. Yeah, he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. The point after, no gimme in the snow, but it's up and good. And the lead grows to 10-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? They start the drive with Connor. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Down. Now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now it's Connor. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, get the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Anthony Walker, the other Colts linebacker with over 100 tackles a year ago, making the play there. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. On second down, Connor looking for space. 
And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Watch the, watch the run. Watch the run. They'll fake it. Now Rudolph. This is Johnson. He's got it. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 26. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. On the run is Connor. He can't get him down. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Bring it. Bring it. Now. now on second and 16, Rudolph looking middle. And it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And that takes us from second to third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Deontay Johnson, 32 yards as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Sometimes when I see these types of plays executed, I think of basketball. Guys boxing other guys off to go out and get a rebound. And he got the rebound right there, but the defense was really placed well. Yeah, they were right there. I mean, that's where it's really tough for a defender. When you're in the right spot, you're draped on the guy catching the ball, yet he still comes down with it. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. That went into the hands of Kane. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Second and three. Brissett is going to float this one deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. 
What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. That's complete to his receiver, Kane. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. And I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Let's go, and Pittsburgh Let's go. getting set to take the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Samuels. Darius Leonard, last year's leading tackler as a rookie of the NFL, in on the stop. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Throwing on second and eight. Rudolph. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. It was Justin Houston, the native of Statesboro, Georgia, with a sack. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. The Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 16. From the gun, here's Rudolph. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Malik Hooker. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They'll run here with Mack. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case. And that play got bottled up. Second and goal from the six this time. Brissett. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Paris Campbell there to make the grab. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower. Bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Vinatieri now to tack on the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive yeah. player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness. Maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. On second down, Samuels. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw, Rudolph. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Check 26, check 26. Ready? They'll fake the handoff. Now Rudolph. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Darius Leonard, the linebacker, able to break that one up. That's just flat out a terrific play because it's rare that you see a hitch route batted down. That means someone read that one really well and was right on the spot when the ball got to the receiver. And the Steelers on third down. Two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. They'll try and run for it with Connor. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. On play action, Brissette. And his throw here is incomplete. With that incompletion, let's take a quick peek ahead to Week 9. Some of the intriguing games. First off, one that you're calling. How about the Red Hot Vikings at the Chiefs? That's going to be fun. That's going to be a blast. And I made a prediction last week that if the Chiefs lost to the Packers at home, if there is any way possible Patrick Mahomes would play against Minnesota, they're going to try their best to have him ready for that one. They need him. Hard to believe the Chiefs have lost three in a row at home. How about the Sunday night game, two Patriots Raven? Yeah, that's going to be a heck of a ball game because the Patriots defense, historical proportions is what we're seeing from them. But here comes Lamar Jackson with his elusiveness at quarterback. That's going to be a blast to see how they game plan for his legs. Bears and Eagles, those teams need that win. Yeah, the Eagles got a huge one last week, going to Buffalo and winning against a stout defense. The Bears, once again, missing a field goal. That rears his ugly head. The Bears absolutely, positively have to have this one. And then lastly, the game of the week, Jets-Dolphins. Yeah, someone's got to win that one, right? And if I were the Jets, I'd be very concerned about this one. I think this is the one the Dolphins circled on their calendar, circled on their schedule. This is the one the Dolphins may very well go get. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. 
And this will do the job nicely as that'll be out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Ready, eight, three. Let's set a tone, fellas, let's set a tone. Let's go. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. He'll have a first down and more past the 20 as they'll finally stop him at the 23-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. On the ready. Come. You're not ready. You're not ready. Kill, kill, kill. Step. Right back to Connor here on first. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, go, go. creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, it's Connor, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. From the gun on third down, it's Rudolph. He'll get that one complete to counter. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. On, the delay six, of game ten, backs two, him up five, first and 15. This is counter. He wipes out the penalty yardage with a good run to get it back to second and seven. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. 70, Indy. I'm coming for you. You might. On the draw, Connor. And an alley to run. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On third down, it's Connor. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy who can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, oh, he's a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. And now he'll tuck it and run. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. And that was a nice, strong run by the guy they call the field general. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. I'm going to run you over. I'm going to run you over. On first and 10 is counter. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. 
part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. They'll try the air now. Here's Rudolph. He'll get this one to Switzer. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. The Steelers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. Rudolph looking to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you Jordan off Barry. until you adjust. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Now he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He can make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Right there in the middle, 55. Coming this way, coming this way. Here we go. <laughs> Throwing on second down. Brissett. It's complete. Deion Kane working the middle. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. <laughs> On the ground, it's Mack. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So the penalty certainly helps them out as they come up on second and five. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. They're able to find Deion Kane complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 34-yard line. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, and they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. 
when you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Now left side on the swing pass. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Into the air once more. It's Brissett. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Brissett. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran, with a pick. Well, Charles switching gears on a bit of a sad note. On Tuesday, October 22nd, Willie Brown passed away. Willie Brown, 16 seasons in the NFL. First four for the Broncos, and then the final 12 as an Oakland Raider. And just think about his career. Hall of Fame, 1984. Nine-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Pro. And let's face it, the lasting image we'll have of him as a player, that interception for Ann Tarkenton in the Super Bowl. The old man, Willie Brown, taking it all the way back, 75 yards against the Vikings for a touchdown. The Raiders won Super Bowl eleven. I had the pleasure of getting to know Willie Brown over the years. And when I tried out for the Dallas Cowboys, we scrimmaged the Raiders at one point. And Willie Brown came over to me and had some nice things to say to me, which was really pretty cool coming from a man of his stature and a man of his ability. And I'll treasure those nice words forever. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Rudolph. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Credit that sack to Jabal Sheard. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, that's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. They'll run on first down. Connor. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. On second down now. Samuels, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long, and that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Rudolph. 
Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jabal Sheard picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That's the second sack of the game, and the best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. To throw on second and ten. Reset. And down inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. First down, it's Connor. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Scampering home from 19 yards out as they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken just inside the 10. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. I'd say it's pretty good strategy. If you throw interceptions on back-to-back -back drives, Let's see if the running backs can handle the ball a little bit, get things going, and also, you motivate your offensive line. I think they're in the mood to fire out and hit someone. Uh, I thought the defense, though, might be a little more prepared for that run. Pretty good gain on the ground. Two yards, good enough for first. It was a play that was designed to trick the defense to try and fool them. They didn't gain a huge chunk of yardage, but they did pick up a first down. First down with Marlon Mack. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? 
has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Out of the gun, Brissett. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. Tyson Alolu with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. He's been terrific so far. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he Get said ready. of himself, 70, I love 80. it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. Rudolph. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time and that'll bring up second down. When everything is in sync on defense, that means everyone's communicating really well, and sometimes it's nonverbal. They just know that when a receiver's in one spot, this person may have him, and he's in another spot, the next defender may have him. And they've squeezed the passing lanes down to where it's so difficult to find an open area to deliver the football, they've made it tough on them all game long. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Yeah. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. A gain of 22. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Rudolph looking to throw it. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. On the set. We own now. Set, set, go. They'll run on first down. Connor, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll bring up a second and 13. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now Rudolph. And he's got it. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. To throw again on second down, Rudolph. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Now it's Rudolph. That is caught. It's Juju for the Steeler touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown ground. And the Steelers have taken the lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And the Colts getting ready to go. They had that lead that is now gone. It is completely gone. Yeah, how does that affect the psyche? Or am I reading into that too much? They should be okay still? No, you're not reading into it too much at all. You've got to wonder what the psyche is of a team because once you build up a lead and things are rolling pretty well, you don't expect it to change. And for it to change this dramatically, and now they're the team doing the chasing, yeah, you want to check out where they are mentally and whether or not they have it in them to come back. We'll soon find out. Yeah, they're on their heels a bit right now. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. From the 40 now on second down, Brissett, that one into the hands of Kane. Let's go. And he'll be brought Let's go. down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And 
as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. To throw is Brissett, looking deep downfield. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by the rookie first rounder from Michigan, Devin Bush. And he returns it up just shy of the 20 to the 19-yard line. The drive will start with Connor. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. On third down, it's Connor, and he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Rudolph now to throw. And McDonald here over the middle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 16 yards, a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. That's a gain of four here in the fourth quarter with them leading by four on the scoreboard. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. You need to give the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you're just holding a slim lead. But that punt, absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he'll get this back down to about the 12-yard line. On first down, Connor. 
And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the eight yard line. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. When you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Again, a run with counter. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. From the gun, here's Rudolph. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Vance McDonald. There to make the grab. And the Steelers capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. That's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. This drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. Extra point now by Boswell. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Now, last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Chester Rogers that time, but it'll be second down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. On second down, Brissett again. He's got it to Hilton. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time. But it's going to be second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. I'm for it, son. I'm coming for it, son. <laughs> They'll throw again. Brissett looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Brissett sets to throw it. That's complete to his receiver, Kane. 
And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 36. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Brissett to throw on first. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. It'll be a gain of six, and it's a second down. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 19. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll run on first down. Mac. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Here's Bissell. And it's caught. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A 12-yard touchdown grab as his guys are back within a single score. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. Second and 10 now from the 27. Get ready. Get ready. Hey, switch gears, switch gears. Now. On the counter, it's Connor. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Give him three on the play, and it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. 
It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little Jordan bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Jordan Berry now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 32 that time. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them a lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Brissette. This to Hines on the drop-off. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. inside the 30 and they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackles made at the Steelers 28 I'm starting to wonder here are they trying to prevent winning because right now they're laying back and they're picking them apart moving the ball downfield I think they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback first down now but the clock continues to move he's back to throw And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That would have been a tough catch, but in this two-minute drill, those are the ones you really hope your guys come up with. Yeah, you don't want your guy to be able to take the out because it was a tough catch. You needed him to come up with that one because if he does, it alters the perspective of this two-minute drill, doesn't it? So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Back to throw. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Right, and down right. by five. They've got to go for it here on fourth yeah. down. We're set to throw for it on fourth. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran with a pick. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. They begin on the ground here with Connor. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. 
The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. Okay, ready? Let's go, Mike 50, Mike 50. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense, let's go. Be Be Down to a knee one more time and that should just about do it. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.